this house tonight. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we are glad because you have come. Oh, hallelujah. We give you glory and honor and praise in this house. Oh, Lord, please give us a spirit of thanksgiving, Lord, all year round, God. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We just worship you tonight, Jesus. Lord, I know every part of this service will give you the praise and will give you the glory for us. In Jesus' mighty name, we ask all oh, that it is so good to me.
pray.
called me today. I was trying to do a bid, and I really was trying to take phone calls, but he wore my phone off the hook. And I finally answered, got up with him, and we'll come up on Saturday morning, the 1st of December, earlier in the day, and we're going to meet with him. And, uh, I'm looking for God to do something. I'm looking for God to do something for that church. This pastor is 78 years old. He was the overseer of Peru for the Church of God for 10 years. He was the overseer of Bolivia for five years. I said, Brother, how long have you been serving God? He said, I've been in the Church of God for 62 years. And I said, Brother, I believe God can do something great for you. And I sense the urgency. Sense the urgency. Let me talk about last year. 78 year old, he knows his time is numbered. And he knows that he wants that church to be in a place that he can continue to grow before God calls him home. And I want you to pray for that little church down in Cordelia, Georgia. I didn't know where it was at. He gave me an address. He called me here. I wrote down the address. And I don't have a GPS on my old flip phone, so I was driving my faith. But I'd been to work Gracie and Elijah go to the orthodontist. And I knew if I got there, I would ask somebody and I'd find. I tell you what, I got to the building of that orthodontist and I saw a Spanish Church of God sign right in front of me. And I could have threw a rock from that orthodontist and hit it. And I thought, you can't tell me God don't get in the arrangements of things. I believe it was a little more than just getting braces on teeth that God took me one time down to Cornelia. To meet with the North and Donna, sitting down the road, I needed to go there to find that little church of God, Spanish church of God. But I want you to pray for them. I want God to move. We got in there and we was a talking. It was probably seven thirty on Friday night, and uh, I looked at Seth. I said, I believe they're practicing worship. He said, I think so too. We was in another building outside of the church, but we could hear the musical instruments and we could hear the singing. Now, I don't understand a bit of Spanish. I mean, not very bit. But I could feel God in what they were singing. And uh, we stopped and as we walked by, we said he opened the door and we went in and stood there for a little while. And they was in there worshiping and glorifying God on 7.30 on a Friday evening. And I thought to myself, how many people in America is found on a Friday night at 7.30? But them Spanish folk were in there worshiping and glorifying God. I couldn't tell you what they were saying. I couldn't read the writing that was on the wall, on the screen. But one thing I knew, my spirit met with their spirit, and they was glorifying Jesus Christ and lifting Him up. So you pray for them. That God will move, because I just got a feeling like God's going to bless that little church. And uh, I know why Carlos and Lucy was here. You know, they told me the pastor was wanting to come help. And when I got there, I seen why he needs their help. They had a, a room there, trophies that would be anything I've ever seen. It would be one at youth camps and children had events, different things going on. I said to myself, God, if you don't pour out your spirit on the Caucasian church in America, you pour it out on the Spanish church. You pour it out on somebody that's hungry for God. Somebody that's hungry for God. I want God to pour out your spirit, don't you? All right, you've already found the first lesson on this chapter number five. Seth's already took us there, so stand with me one more time. Verse 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble minded. Verse Thessalonians 5 14, by the way. Support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Quench not the Spirit. Heavenly Father, I love you tonight. I thank you, Father, for the Word of God. I thank you, Lord, for each and every one of the sound of my voice tonight. And God, I just pray, God, that you move in a mighty way, God. Lord, touch us and let us lift up and glorify the name of Jesus tonight. And God will praise you and magnify you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You can be seated. Paul told
told the church at Thessalonica, rejoice evermore. Rejoice evermore. Rejoice and again I say rejoice. Saints of God, there's times in our life our head is hanging low. There's times in our life when things are not going our way. There's times in our life when we feel like we just don't even want to get out of bed, don't even raise our head, and we want to murmur and we want to complain. But I'm here to tell you, God said rejoice and rejoice evermore. Sometimes we have to offer a sacrifice of praise. Listen, it's easy to praise God when things are going good. It's easy to praise God when we're on the mountain. But I'll tell you, when it really, the rubber meets the road and you have to offer God a sacrifice of praise, you'll have true rejoicing down in your soul. You'll know how to rejoice evermore. Listen, I'm telling you, heaven is going to be a place of rejoicing. No more sickness. No more sorrow. No more death. None of those bad things. Evermore rejoicing. I don't know about you, but there's nothing I like better in this life than to be in a service where the liberty of the Holy Ghost is moving and the joy of the Lord is flooding your soul. Money can't buy it. Money can't buy it. Nobody can give it to you but the Father in heaven. But when you get in that service where the joy of the Lord is bubbling in your soul, it doesn't matter what's happened that week. It doesn't matter what you've went through all day. All that matters is you're in the presence of God and you're glorifying Him. And I just have to believe that is a small foretaste of what heaven is going to be like. When you feel the Spirit of God just flooding your soul that you just can't contain yourself, that's just a small portion of what heaven is going to be like. Brother Mark, I believe there's going to be times where we're going to be rejoicing around the throne room of God and that old running spirit of the Holy Ghost is going to hit the saints of God and they're going to run down the streets of gold to praise and glorifying God. I believe there's going to be times around heaven when old demons are playing on the heart and they begin to give worship to God when the spirit of God is just going to flutter like a dove and everybody stands real still afraid to move left or the right because you're just standing enjoying the presence of God May I tell you, you can rejoice evermore standing still. You can rejoice evermore running the backs of the pews. You can rejoice evermore no matter what the circumstance that you're in. And if you'll rejoice evermore, you'll find yourself praying without ceasing. I told you about MIP writing down prayer. When I was writing that down, God brought this scripture to me in 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5, 18. Pray without ceasing. Or 7, they pray without ceasing. And I said, God, what is prayer without ceasing? And God said, walking in communion and fellowship with me all the day long. That's prayer without ceasing. May I tell you, it's good to get on our knees. It's good to lay on our face before God. But it's also good to walk in fellowship with Him. What happened? He looked at them disciples and He said, Come and follow Me. They walked in fellowship with Him. If we're walking every day of our life in fellowship with Him, rejoicing evermore, I promise you, you are praying without ceasing. Because you're in continual contact with God. Brother Bill, does they have to be words of prayer coming off my lips all day to be praying without ceasing? No. See, the fact is, we're put in this world. We've got to witness. We've got to testify. But we also have a job we have to do. Paul said, if you don't work, you don't need. There's things we've got to do in this life in order to live. But that spiritual man, that soul that's within you, is continually crying, Abba, Father, all the day long unto the glory of God. If we
we will rejoice evermore. We will pray without ceasing. That spiritual inner man is crying, Abba, Father, and we're walking with Him. And in everything, give thanks. <coughs> everything, give thanks. Over the last seven or eight days, I've put in some long hours working on it. It was the biggest job the company had ever been in. I was kind of excited, kind of hoping to get it. I'd even told Sister Cocker last night that I'd been praying about the thing, thinking about the thing. And I may just add three or four hundred thousand dollars to the bid, and if we get it, I'm going to take that money up to the bank and say, here's the payoff of the Murphy Church of God, give us a clear title. I called the boss man today and I said, I'm at $15,600,000. I said, we're probably too high, but I said, you know what? We can put it down to 15-2 if you want to. He said, let's go 15-4. Let's hit somewhere in the middle and just see what happens. I started lowering the bid. I got down there to around 15-4, and the Spirit of God checked me. He said, did not you say you wanted to add more into that thing to pay off the church? It could be. And I backed up, and I said, well, God, if I get it, I'm just going to let it ride where I already turned it in at. Well, they read out the bids. And guess what? I wasn't low. I was second. Somebody was $1.6 million cheaper than us. And I said, well, goodness. There goes paying the church off. And then they told the engineer's estimate, and they were 20% above the estimate. And I said, well, praise God, it's going to bid again. There'll be another shot, another chance. For a minute, I thought, a week and a half of working on a bid. And now it's all gone to naught. Nothing. But the Word said, in everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. Whether you was low bitter or high bitter, give thanks. Whether you got a good report from the doctor or a bad report from the doctor, give thanks. Thanks. Why? Because this is the will of God concerning you. See that stretch of road that that bid was for, Seth? Was that stretch of road where I would stood behind two coffins of my church members because they got killed on that stretch of road? It was that stretch of road that I drove over here to Andrews and went into the state offices and would y'all please do something to this stretch of 441? I buried two church members. It's dangerous. More people's going to get killed. Will you do something? something, you know, to that road so it come out to be it. Now it's going to be prolonged even longer because they got to rebid it. But I pray to God, God don't let nobody else get killed on that stretch of road. You know what? we got the same problem right out here. Something's got to be done down through Hamburger Alley or whatever they call it. That's just like suicide driving down through there sometimes. But in everything, give thanks. Saints of God, in everything, give thanks. I was thinking about it today. I was thinking about old brother Junior Wilson standing behind him and doing his funeral being killed on that stretch of road. But then I got to Lincoln, Sister Cochran. Had he not died, we wouldn't have had the money to move to Cartuca J Church of God. God had his hand in it. God had a plan for it. He was in the glory of God. He wouldn't have come back had he wanted to. But see, that God had a process and a plan for all that. We've got to in everything give thanks. See, it's the will of God for you. We may not not understand things right now. We may not understand why this is happening. Seth, I know you've asked God, God, why did I hit that tree? Why did I end up in the creek? Why did I break my shoulder? Why have I been out of work for three or four months? But you can give thanks to God tonight because God had a plan for you. God had an angel with you. You're still here in the house of God tonight. We have got to give thanks. In everything, give thanks. The will of God will never take you where the grace of God will not keep you. The will of God will never take you where the grace of God will not keep you. Sometimes the will of God is going to take you to a place that you don't feel like praising Him. I'm going to take you to a place where you're going to cry out to God and say, God, why me? But in everything, give thanks. In everything, give thanks. When I lay flat on my back from a car accident, I looked up to heaven 
and I had to give him thanks. Brother Jerry, he slowed me down. He slowed me down because I was running from him. Running from where he wanted me to be. And he took laying on my back through the fall of 2001 for me to pick up a microphone in March of 2002 and say, God's called me to preach the Word. I can look back now with their own I'll give you thanks for the pain. I can give you thanks for the suffering. Because had I not been there, I wouldn't be here tonight. When we come on Thanksgiving, many times we stand and we thank God for all the good things that's happened the past year. It's very rare you'll see somebody give up and give thanks for the bad things. And don't get me wrong. There's been times in my life that I looked across the congregation and I seen certain people there and I refused to give a testimony of service. Looking at me like I'm crazy. You'll learn the ones in the crowd that always have an oh me. And when they get the floor, everybody in their family's dying. Everything's terrible. Please pray for me and sit down. I didn't ask them for prayer requests, sister. I asked them for a testimony. I ask them for a witness. Oh, do I have a witness? I ask them for a witness of what God can do. And I learned there was times when I said I'm walking up, I ain't having this long stairs tonight. Other times, I knew right away that happened this long service. But I wish that sometimes them they give a laundry list of prayer requests. In a testimonial service, but then stop and lift their hands for the bill. I want to demonstrate for you just a minute how long it took Eddie Brooks to make it to the pulpit. uncontrollably unless I'm holding on to something. I have a brain tumor on the side of my head. You'll have to excuse me for my shakes and if I say something wrong. But then he said, put on greater glory in my infirmities. For the cause of Christ. My God, the anointing of the Holy Ghost came down. What are you saying, Pastor? I'm saying a man full of infirmity. A man that went on feeling would have stayed in California. But he got on a plane and he flew to Chattanooga, Tennessee. He went to Cleveland, Tennessee. He drove on a Sunday morning through the Ocoee Gorge at out 64 to find himself at Cartuga J. All he could do to walk up a hill. But he said, I've come to give thanks. I've come to glorify God in my infirmity. I'm telling you, I want to thank God for the good things. I want to thank God for all of His blessings. But I can stand here tonight and say, hey, there's been things this past year that ain't been easy. There's things that's been a sacrifice. There's been things that's been tough. But you know what? I'm going to come to God. I'm going to give God the glory tonight. Give God the praise for all the hardship. Give God the praise for everything. Because this is the will of God for my life. This is the will of God for your life. If you will do that, I'm telling you, God will bless you. 
this thanksgiving. In everything, give thanks. I'm thankful for a wonderful wife. Thankful for two beautiful children. I'm thankful for the basement of a compound in Ambato, Ecuador, in May of 2001. That God said He's going to bless me with beautiful children and He'll serve the Lord. I'm thankful for the promise of God. I'm thankful for the call. I'm thankful that He still speaks to His children. I'm thankful that He knows my future. And I'm thankful that He cares enough for me to reveal it to me. Show me what He wants me to do. But I'm also thankful for the sacrifice. I'm thankful for the times that I've had to struggle in my life, Brother Mark. It's going to sound crazy. I'm thankful that when I was 19 year old, my grandfather died in my arms. I can be thankful for that. Because I got to hold him and pray for him. Because of that, my dad has never stopped serving God. He turned his life around forever. For eternity. For that, I'm thankful. See, when you pray, Praise 